is in heaven, everybody, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you become a Christian, your primary citizenship is in heaven. Now, my in-laws, they came from Norway, which we're going to get to see a little bit of Norway in this month. But they came from Norway, and they met on a boat coming over here, and they fell in love, and they got married, those parents. They became American citizens. They went through, they came in uh, legally, and they went through all the classes. They had to have sponsors. It was a big deal. But they maintain their citizenship in Norway. They were dual citizenship. Many people during World War II, as you, if you understand history, I promise not to bore you. I love history, so I've got to be careful. But they actually, there was actually German people born and raised in Germany who, because of their primary citizenship being in America, that went back and fought the Germans in Germany. Did you know that? There was Italians who fought the Italians. So it, it can happen that way. Once you declare, you can declare a primary citizenship, but still maintain citizenship elsewhere. My primary citizenship is in heaven, and I'm waiting for Jesus Christ to come. That's what, that's what Paul wrote to the church. The idea that we can't be nuanced enough to love Jesus with all our heart and to be a Christian first and still love America, is, it, to me, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. To say that I can't, I'm, I'm mature enough to say my, my allegiance is to Jesus, but I also, I'm thankful that God placed me in America. Amen? And I believe why America has been so blessed, and you'll see in a minute, is because God didn't bless us so we could hoard it up and go around puffing out our chest and saying we're the greatest country and beat that other countries. God blessed America. Listen to me if you're watching online somewhere in the world. God blessed America so we could bless you. God blessed America so we, so we could share the gospel. There's no country who set out more gospel investments in finances and people than the United States of America. Know this. Good, we, that was the best decision we made. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to slow down because, as I said, I, I really don't want, it, don't want people walking out of here. Um, uh, we do know if, if we, you can, you can, we do know that Psalm 33 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. So the, America has been blessed because of the father, founding fathers' decisions that they made and declared it. Now, um, I will tell you this, and I'm going to, like I said, this whole morning may not flow, and if this is your first time with us, come back and give me a chance when we're doing the routine stuff, all right? You'll see that, you know. And if you don't like organized religion, welcome to New Hope. We're not very organized, okay? So, so but I will tell you that um, we, it was born with the idea, it was born, I think the best way I've heard it said is with a birth defect. The slavery situation was definitely a birth defect. The fact that it was allowed was a was a terrible thing. And I know they had to negotiate it to get the southern states. I won't get too deep in it. It was wrong. It was wrong. It was wrong. It's wrong that we should never own another person. It's ridiculous. It's wrong. The other thing that was wrong was when we, or the way we treated the Indians. So, so what I'm saying, what are you, why are you bringing this up, Pastor? You're, you're bumming me down. We're not, I did, I'm not saying Jesus is perfect. America is not. Jesus is perfect. America is not. They made, we made a lot of mistakes. Imperfect Imperfect people were placed in the leadership, and they made terrible mistakes. You cannot justify the way uh, African Americans were treated. You cannot justify. You, I don't care how you spread the blame around. The way America treated that, the way they treated the Indians. I know I got some history teachers here, so don't get mad at me if I hit the dates wrong. But I know this. I, we've worked on the reservations. We've seen the. It's it's not even over. The, the way they live, it, it's still terrible. So this is not a perfect nation. You can you can and 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 you know when I when I post that I love Three Rivers. Nobody ever complains about that. Nobody accuses me of being, being a Three Riversite or anything. I, say, I, love, I love the town God placed me in. I love it. I, I love Michigan. I love the state God placed me in. Nobody's ever, can, when I've said that or posted that, but you say you love America, and there's people with pot shots out there saying, you're a nationalist, you know, and, they, and begin to attack you. God bless America. They, God bless America is a prayer, land that I love. That's asking God to bless America. But remember the title of this sermon, and I don't brag about my titles, but we are blessed to be a blessing. If God is blessing you individually, it's not so you can be selfish about it. It's so you can share that blessing with somebody else to roll that over. If God's given you a home or a car or finances or talent, you're, God, God, you might have got a little as an embryonic and you grew it, but God's blessing you, to, if you're a believer, to be a blessing. And God blessed this nation to be a blessing. And that's why, uh, I, again, I don't have the stats right before me, actually, but I will tell you this. 
we, we feed the world, percentage-wise. Did you know that? America feeds the world. I've read agricultural reports of how much stuff that we, and I don't want to get into the political side of it, whether we should keep it or say, but a lot of countries benefit from the, from the uh, b benevolence of America when it comes to many things. Did you know that? And, and it bet we better do that because God's blessed us. We're blessed. We start hoarding up and making it all about us, and God will take his hand off it. And by the way, if I just start living my life just to take care of Steve Miller, God will take his hand off of me too. Did you know that? I, sure, I went to uh, go back 25 years after I graduated from Southeastern. I went back to Southeastern to get my master's. And there was a couple of reasons for that. One of them was I had to wait for all the professors from the first time to retire. <laughs> or maybe I should have. There was one teacher who stayed, but I ducked him the whole time, the 16 weeks. And I had helped to get through that and, uh, because I thought, man, they tell you, don't wait 25 years to go back to school. You know, Parker, if you graduate from Evangel, if that happens, if a miracle happens and you graduate, I want you to know that uh, if you're going to get your master's, get right back in it and do it. Don't, don't take time off because unless it's ordered of the Lord. But my, my, the, the president there actually taught us every Wednesday, 12-hour class. Every Wednesday he stood up and, and he, didn't, he stood there. I mean, it was amazing. Mark Rutland, then he went on to become the president of Oral Roberts University after, he, after, I, after I left there later on. But here's what he says. It is petty and legalistic to shame patriotic churches. Patriotism in a worship context is not idolatry unless one makes it so. Prayer for the nation is not prayer to the nation. Gratitude for our nation and intercession for its leaders is biblical. You see the difference? So, so you know, um, you, you know, yeah, we have a flag over there, but we don't come in here waving our flags. And, well, we, we wave our hands to the Lord. That's our number one allegiance. But like I said, can't we be nuanced enough to, to love Jesus with all our heart but also love our country? Listen, I love the kids in, this, in our preschool, and I love the kids in this church. I love them. But I love my grandkids more. Uh-oh. So I, I, I have nothing but love. I, man, I, I loved Italy. I loved Italy. I, man, I loved it so much. I gained seven pounds while I was there. You know, I, mean, I loved it for the time I'm there. But I love America more. You can love at different levels. This idea that we have to love everybody. You don't love everybody equally. You, you want to love Jesus, number one, but you don't love everybody equally. Right? I could get in trouble here with some illustrations, but let me just be real broad. So I know I love the ladies of our church. I love you. But I love my wife more. Somebody say amen real quick. Come on now. You see what I'm talking I was going to pick a couple ladies. I thought that would be stupid. So... But you know what I mean by that. So we could be this idea that if, God forbid, we say we love America, oh, we must not be a Christian. That's absurd to me. That's ridiculous. God planted you here for a reason, and specifically, he placed you here. As I said, America's to be a blessing. You're, you're supposed to be a blessing, too. God bless America. Is, uh, some people act like you're cussing if you say that. Well, I want God to bless America so America can bless other countries. I want God to use America. Jesus was clear that, you, that, you, that homage can go both ways. My citizenship, number one, is in heaven, but I am also a citizen of the United States, and I'm glad for it. I'm not ashamed of it. I won't let other people shame me, which is very popular right now, especially with the younger, some of the younger pastors, to shame you if you say you love America. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. In Matthew 22 the first, I'm assuming it's behind me, the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle uh, Jesus on his teaching. Kind of like what can happen what, what I'm doing today. There's some people that are going to listen to what I say and they're going to attack me for what I'm preaching today. I'm going to tell you because of what I'm saying. This happened to Jesus all the, all the time. So today, I'm preaching like Jesus. And they sent him to the disciples of the Herodians saying, Teacher, now they're going to use a question to, to uh, trick him. We know that you are true and teach the way of God in truth, nor do you care about any, uh, you, you, nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of men. In other words, he lo they're saying he loved people equally. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness, the fact that he was, they were trying to trick him, and, and he said, why do you test me, you hypocrites? Now, if somebody challenges you on Facebook for loving America, you might want to soften your response. But Jesus gets away with what he has said. 
show me the tax money. So they brought him the Daenerys, the coin, and said to him, what, whose image is on this? And they said, it's Caesar's. And he said to them, render to Caesar, give to Caesar what is the things that are his, and to God the things that are God. When they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. I think the response that I saw to 4th of July and the criticism for people who were saying that they love the country is really a, a kind of a, a premiere for what's going to happen during the election season. If we're not careful, it can get really nasty. And we, as, we, as, we cannot answer back in the same way. Our weapons are not, our, our, our warfare are not the weapons of people who are evil. It's just not the way it is. We don't get to use their tools. We don't get to do that. They use hate. We use love. They use spite. We use forgiveness. They use gossip. We be careful with what we say. You see what I'm saying? They have, but we have weapons they don't have. We have prayer and love and faith. That's our weapons. They don't have those weapons. You know, as I told you a couple weeks ago, boy, did I get some, uh, did I get some, <laughs> I get some responses about this, but I don't care, I'm going to do it again. So you, why, I, you, you remember uh, Malchus came to arrest Jesus, a soldier in the garden, and what happened? Did you pinch that baby so you could leave? Did you? Did you pinch that baby so you could leave? No, I do not. I don't care, as long as you don't run around. So, so Malchus is a soldier, and he comes to get Jesus, and Peter big old fisherman, not a swordsman. He takes out his sword. That would be the, the weapon we don't use. And what does he do? Cuts off Malchus's ear. And when Jesus sees it, he explains, Though, that's not our response to things. That's not going to work. And he reaches down, and he puts Malchus's ear back on. And then Malchus drops to his knees, and no, Malchus arrests him anyway. Now, what did I say last time? I'm going to say it again because it's worth it. It's going to be good. You missed it. I want you to hear it. I think it would have been much cooler if he'd cut his head off. You don't think that would be cool? Head bouncing around. Jesus reaches down, picks up his head, and puts it back on. Come on. I mean, the ear is cool, but the head? Some of you are thinking, why not just cut him in half like the magician? All right. But what I'm trying to say is that the point of the matter is, first of all, miracles don't always make people respond to Jesus anyway because they ignored it. Secondly, Peter had the, right, had the right desire to protect Jesus, but he used the wrong weapon. And you could come to whether it's social media or a dis dispute at your workplace or even within families that um, you can have the right motive, you can have the right position, but if we're not careful, what do we do? We use the wrong weapon. I went to my 50th reunion, and we, we all declared before we got there, no, no politics. And it was a good thing because I'm from Connecticut. Hello? That's just one step under Taxachusetts, I mean Mass Massachusetts, as far as their political standings. So I knew I wasn't gonna get into that mess. So we didn't discuss it. But people came to me, there was, as, my, as my class has gotten older, because when you were a Christian growing up in our high school, uh, there wasn't much respect for Christians, but if I, my has gotten older, do you know every meal I was at, they stopped and said, Rev Miller's here, would you pray? These are people I didn't know. And before I left, they asked for a prayer in the household. So I stopped them. I said, you guys are having me pray everywhere we go. What's it all about? They said, Steve, we're getting older now, and we want to make things right. Amen. <laughs> That's exactly what they said. I said, I'll have at it, man. I prayed, too. I stuck some gospel in there, you know. They know if they're watching. They say they watch. I was honored to do that, by the way, because our weapons are prayer, not a sword. We don't use the same tools, but we don't stop fighting either. Amen? We don't give up. We don't surrender. What Jesus is doing, though, he's saying, give to, your, give to the government what's the government's and give to the Lord what's the Lord's. But the Lord gets number one. He's the premium. He gets the number one. Some nations honor God more than others. Some don't. If you know the history of Haiti, we've been to Haiti uh, with, a, with a medical team, and I've been down there other times on mission trips. It's a very, very sad place. It's very, very sad. If you don't study history, they used to be uh, controlled by France years ago, before my time, way back when. Napoleon was, uh, was a, uh, one of the people that attacked and overcame them. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to get this exactly right because I just I read it, didn't write it down, but I will tell you that what they did was to over, they eventually overthrew France, Haiti. Now, at one time, Haiti was prosperous. 
and wealthy. And France overthrew them. Now watch, this is a country that made a horrible mistake. But they called, they got the people together while they were ready to attack, and they called upon the witch doctors. And they pledged themselves to voodoo. And there's voodoo there now. Listen, when I was in Haiti, there was an oppression that's there. You wouldn't believe it. There's a heaviness there. They called upon the God, their gods, and now that's the God of Haiti. And do you know since that, even though they, they, they overthrew, it worked, but since then, they have been one of the most attacked. It's one of the most depressed, discouraged. Now, some of that's because of 95% of the wealth is with 5% of the people. And that use that number as an example, but it might be off a little bit. But there, there's an evilness there. They have, here's what I will say. They have not honored God. They have not made, made God their, uh, their Lord. And, and a country that doesn't do that is going to get some darkness to it. And a country that does it. Now, remember, individuals, you can't, you can't go to heaven by becoming an American. Just because, you know, there's no, there's no family plan here. You know, it's an individual decision to give your life to Jesus Christ. But in America, is there a place where it's more free to do that? Than, no, there's not. I can still declare Jesus as Lord. I don't have to worry about, so far, people busting the back of that door and pointing guns at us and saying not to say it. We live in a country that's more free to share your story of Jesus Christ than anywhere in the world. Did you know that? Are you grateful? God bless America. That's what I say. Now, I want to be clear, and this is why I'm saying I've got, I'm, 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 you may not think so, but I'm preaching with the governor on because I don't want you to take the wrong thing out here. I'm not rallying you up to, to be excited about being a Christian. I want you to be grateful. I want you to be grateful. I want you to, I mean, uh, uh, not a Christian, but a citizen of America. I want you to be excited about being a Christian and grateful that you're in a place where you can do that and not be afraid so far. I do know there's people that work in certain places where they have to really use wisdom about when and how they say who, what they believe. They, not, they get blacklisted. They can get sent to HR. They, things can happen. So we pray for people who are placed in those positions where they have to really be careful that someone wouldn't be triggered or offended. But I can stand here to say, where I work, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I'm grateful. So that's why I pray for you. But I send you out like agents into dark places where you can, with the help of the Holy Spirit, be an example of what it means to love Jesus and to be loved by him. And I want to be clear, God loves everybody all around the world. Listen to me. Listen to me. God does not love Americans more than anybody else. Well, you say, why are we so blessed? It's because of the response and the governors and the things that we put into it. When, if, you're going to, if you're going to live like Haiti, you're not going to get the blessings of God. You want, you want to worship uh, voodoo? You want to use voodoo as your number one religion? You're not going to get God's blessings. And individuals, if, we want to, if they want to worship the evilness and the wickedness of this world, they're not going to get the same blessings. So a country, in a, in a sense, not completely, is like an individual. Because we know even within America, as I said, the wickedness that has taken place is confounding, isn't it? And the way we've treated people has been, uh, has been certainly not example in all areas because men are imperfect and we live in a fallen world. But the overall arch has been there. And we know that all cultures aren't spiritually equal. Our culture is, so far, thank God, different than, than Haiti's culture. And I believe we're blessed for that. But every nation that honors the Lord is promised to be blessed by the Lord. And America is blessed because God was honored by the founding fathers. In fact, there's still, when you walk around Washington, they haven't torn down every monument. You can still see scripture on some of the monuments. The Ten Commandments are still in the courtrooms of Washington, D.C. Did you know that? So there is a constant acknowledgement to the, to the Judeo-Christian uh, founding father's way that they said there, there are absolutes, there is rights that are rights and wrongs that are wrongs, and they use the Bible as their guide for boundaries and the message of way, the way they were going to live their lives, imperfect as they were. The USA was blessed by God for one reason, to be a blessing to other nations. Have we always hit the bullseye? Absolutely not. Have we made some wrong terms? Absolutely. But I will tell you that this nation has blessed nations all around the world constantly. And, and just for a little sidetrack, uh, there are still people from the nations that, that we say that we've been cruel to. I, I still see people sneaking on the border. I mean, people are still wanting to come here and buy the droves, buy the thousands, buy the millions of all colors. 
I mean, if we're as racist and wicked as some people would declare, where well, I can't say I love America and be a pastor and a Christian, they want me to not to say that, tell me to shut up, then why are the people of color pouring in here every chance they get? Come on now, you know it's true. But as I said before, because of the sinfulness of man, America has at times fallen short. There's no question about it. It's, it there's, no, there's no excuse. You can't justify it. I can't even, when I read about it, how many broken promises, I can't understand it. I don't get it. Maybe they meant it when they said it, but then things changed, but that doesn't justify it. People were abused and mistreated under the leadership of the American flag. It's true for the sake of our nation. And that's wrong. And that's wrong. How many believers do we have here? Raise your hand if you're a Christian. Okay, put them back down. Have you, ever, have you done everything right? No. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. All we like sheep have gone astray. We're not perfect. One day when we get to heaven, we'll never sin again. I'm looking forward to heaven. <laughs> but for now, so as a pastor, when, uh, when uh, leaders fall short, as it fits in with the message God laid in my heart, I'll call them out. I'll call them out. And America needs to be called out. We haven't had anything perfect. But the fact that we're not perfect doesn't mean that we can't ask God to bless us and the fact that we can't, that we can't love our country. My wife loves me, but she doesn't think I'm perfect. She doesn't know whether to say amen or be quiet right there. You don't have to be perfect to be loved. If you're looking, let me tell you something. You're looking for a perfect, uh, perfect nation, you got to get to heaven. You got to get new heavens and new earth. So I'm all about that. I mean, heaven's going to be a wonderful place, but the, Jesus is the door. You've got to have the door to get into heaven. So we're not perfect, but we're blessed, and I'm grateful. And I ask God to bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night. What, that's a prayer from the mountains and prairies, through the oceans. Well, God bless America, my home sweet home. I'm not, I'm not apologizing for that. And I believe French Christians ought to thank God for the good stuff about France. I don't know a lot, but there's, you know, something good in there. You know, croissants. I like a good croissant. No, it's not that. You, you understand, we, 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 I'm not going to let somebody else tell me how patriotic I can be and how thankful I can be for America. I'm not. I'm not going to let them shame me, as, as Dr. Rutland said, because I love my country, because I'm grateful that I'm from here. And, why, I'm, and I believe the Lord lays on my heart because we're entering that last four months or whatever it is, Maybe a little longer, of this season we get into where people can get really pretty, pretty nasty if you don't agree with them about how, how our country should go. Nasty. And I'm talking about within the church. I get it when, when unchurched people attack me. I expect it. But within the church, as believers, that breaks the heart of God. And everybody doesn't have to think like me. But, you know, the ballot box is supposed to be private, too. Did you know that? I mean, they, you don't walk in there in front of everybody and punch a number. You know, they, they have a curtain. You draw the curtain. So you have to be careful and be, be shrewd about where you share what you believe and why. Because we're not supposed to get in within the body of Christ. We're not supposed to be in dispute and fussing and fighting all the time. Did you know that's not God's plan? Amen. So I'm asking for wisdom to negotiate that and to, and to be a good leader as I. Because I, sometimes some people tick me off by what they say. Now, I've never made anybody mad about what I've said, but I've been made mad. But I can't respond. I, I, want, I, I want to I keep my sword on the ground and use the tools that God's given me to respond. Because unlike Peter, there's time I'm not aiming for the ear. I want to lop that head off and kick it down the street. That's not, that doesn't please God. So you could be right and handle it wrong. Say amen. Not you, me. I could be. Pray for your pastor. Because God's blessed us in spite of our shortcomings, we need to be grateful and generous. America should be responding, and, and every, when you see, you just watch. Thank God for Convoy of Hope and other Christians. But watch and see how when nations go through catastrophes, whether related or otherwise, how America shows up. Just think about what, how we're investing in, in Ukraine that's come under attack. I mean, with millions, you, you can dispute it, you can say, no, it ought to go. I'm just saying, we are, we are helping other nations all the time. Did you know that? Just look at the history. Now, you may not agree with everything they do, but, I mean, we, we, are, we, are, we, we don't just 
huddle down and care about ourselves. Some people think we should care about ourselves a little bit more with our veterans and some of our people impoverished. But again, I'm just saying that America takes what they have and gives it away. Christians' love for the country should not come at the expense of other countries. In other words, I can love America, but not at the point where I hate other countries. That's not a godly response. Hear my heart on that. That is not a godly response. I don't, I don't hate Russia. There's people, God loves Russians. My God loves Russians. So who am I to hate Russians? I don't hate Chinese people. I hate some of the stuff they make and send us. Really? Go down to the uh, world's largest, whatever that thing is in Mishawaka or Middlebury or Shipshawana, booths of Chinese. I mean, it's not as, you know. But the people, Jesus loves them. So you're going to hate the Chinese people? You, we're not even allowed to hate people that want to hate, that hate me. See, this is why I'm asking God, the Holy Spirit, to really fall heavy on me because I don't want this. I can't help what you take away. I can help what I give out through the, but I can't help what you take away. As I say, I'm not rallying you up to wave a flag. I'm rallying you up. I hope to raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for America. Thank you, Jesus. Use me and use our country to please you. As long as America will be blessing others, because of the founding fathers, because of the sinfulness of man and, and resisting and repenting, God will continue to use it. But if we fall into the wrong trap and go down the wrong road, just like God takes his hand off of me, if I begin to take the wrong attitude and, and, and gather the wrong information and share it inappropriately and act inappropriately, God will pull back his blessing from Steve and he will pull back his blessing from our country. People who tr trash America, Christians, I'm just, by the way, this message is for believers primarily, but believers who trash America because of the mistakes they've made, they, every chance they get, I'm telling you, travel to a third world country. Travel to a third world country. I'm, I've been privileged to preach in them. I, I love preaching there. I hate staying there. It's horrible. I stayed in Haiti one night. I got there. They said, we have air I said, oh, yeah, there'll be air conditioning. We got there, and the, the air conditioning had broken down, so they put all the nurses and doctors. I wish Merrill was here. And they put me and, and my brother-in-law in a room with a, supposed to be a ceiling fan, but when it was on, it would, it would squeak, so they shut it off. And I was laying in there. Now, don't, don't get all weird on me when I tell you this. I'm not trying to gross you out. I'm just telling you this. So I'm laying in bed, and I'm like, oh, man, this is horrible. This smells terrible. And it's our first night in Haiti. I'm saying, God, don't let me get a bad attitude. We're going to be ministering for a week there. And I said, oh, man, this room smells awful. We had, we'd gotten there late at night, and she, Lily knows the story because I called up weeping. And, uh, and so my, my, my brother-in-law was on the other side there of the room we had. The two preachers had a private area, but still we didn't have any AC. It was hot. And I'm gonna, and, I'm gonna, and oh, I said, oh, the smell. Where? In the morning when the light sun came up, I woke up. They had vented the bathroom and they had run the vent over, and it was supposed to go out the window, but it had dropped down, and it was right over my bed. <laughs> I pray the Lord would punish every person who laughed. I love preaching there. I don't like staying there. Now, over time, we love the people, and there were some wonderful stories that you tell, I told about the, getting to work with the eye doctor, and he put the glasses on these people who thought, you know, if you've never wore glasses, you think that what you see is all is normal, and then you put glasses on, you can see, and I watch people, adults and children weep, and I cried with every one of them because they were actually seeing now because they had glasses they couldn't see. They had, so that was cool, but I made sure that vent wasn't where it was the first night. Travel to a third world country. And if you're honest with yourself, when you get back here, you'll kiss the ground. Maybe not literally, but second world country, other countries. But you get to a third world country. My prayer for our country today as we enter into this season where it's going to get, it's going to get nasty, I'm going to tell you. Let's not be nasty ourselves. But 
I'm concerned about America. I'm concerned about some of the laws that are being passed, the absence of God in places. I know some, some states have put Bible teaching back in their, I don't know if you know this, but there's been some, a rubber band effect in some ways. But just like in my, if I, if I ignore God and I continue to ignore God, he'll remove his hand of blessing from me. And if America continues to ignore God, he will remove his hand of blessing from the USA. We don't, we're not like in favored status forever, amen. No, if we continue to turn away from God, just like, just like we have a free will, the, the country has a free will. That's why it's important for Christians to be involved in the process because I want to continue to be a blessing. I want to continue. I don't want us, God to take his hand of blessing off America. I want us to still be a beacon of light, a light up on a hill is one of our shining light. I, and you should want that too. And so we get involved. And, and I want, and someone said, oh, you should never, you should never uh, talk uh, uh, politics today. Let me tell you something. When they, when they made abortion a political activity, I'm talking politics. I didn't make it a political activity. When they made transgenderism a political activity, I'm talking that. Seven-year-old kids getting drugs without telling their parents to, to change their sex. I'm getting involved with that. They made it political. These are moral issues. And, and if not here in the pulpit, who's going to say it? Somebody's got to say it. And by the way, I want to raise Christian fire chiefs and police chiefs and policemen and mayors and senators right from our congregation. We, can, we have to be quiet. I get we can't represent, a, we can't tell you who to vote for, and we, but we could share voting records of people, let you know who's out there. People say, oh, that's wrong. And Baloney. I think you should be, the, I, want, I want my congregation to be the most educated people in, in, in the community when they, when they get involved with the leadership. You know, we choose our leadership for the most part, and you get the leaders you deserve. I think the United States is on thin ice right now. I think we're in a place, it, 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 we're at a tipping point. So we need to be prayed up. Now, no matter what happens, I believe God's going to sustain us. I want to get, come on, put your smiles on, come on. I mean, we're going to make it no matter what. The church is alive, and, and, and so, I mean, get in the ark. Because we're going to make it. And it's not about how even I'm, I, if, listen, if it comes to a place where I can't preach the truth without going to jail, please come visit me because I'm preaching the truth. I mean that. So this isn't about me, but I want us to be, I still want to be able to have that freedom to get the word out without being constrained. It matters. We're so, we can be so nonchalant because we're, we're so used to it. But I've, I've stood with, with ministers in countries where they can't, they can't on the street share Jesus Christ without fear of being arrested on the street corner. Forget about search. You get caught witnessing, you get arrested. It's hard for us to get our mind around that. But it could happen. So let me say again, because I don't want you, and if I'm repeating myself, it's on purpose. Our primary allegiance is to the Lord our God. That's it. That's it. And we don't love ourselves at the expense of others. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things are added. Seek first the kingdom of God. But my obedience to God, the choices I make, listen to me, friends. Beloved, hear my heart on this. It reveals my heart's condition. And the choices a country makes reveals their condition. The choice a state makes reveals the condition of the leaders. And when you vote, it reveals the condition. And so some of the things that please God have been set aside for the sake of elections in the past several elections. God loves us uh, when we keep his commandments. His commandments are not burdensome. It's not hard to live for Jesus. There's speed bumps and potholes, but listen, my, my, my worst day living for Jesus is better from the best day that I had when I was living for the devil. I'm going to tell you right now. My worst day, and I've had some rough ones, but they're better. So it's not burdensome. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments in John 14. And then in 16, and he says, I will pray to the Father. He will give you another helper. Then he may bother you forever. If I keep God's commandments, the Holy Spirit will help me. 
will help me. You might say, well, Pastor Steve, you're getting, you're, you're getting ahead of things. I mean, we're a long way from what you're saying could happen in America. Well, maybe. I hope so. But I'm not going to wait till it happens. I mean, we do marriage conferences around here, and I preach on marriage. I don't wait till everybody's getting divorced. It's too late. I mean, I think we need to reaffirm our standards. Our number one, we're, we pledge allegiance to the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And along the way, we're grateful and pledge our allegiance to the country we live, that we are going to believe that as we follow, as America follows God, we're going to thank God and be grateful for the United States of America, unashamedly. Let somebody else tell me I can't wave a flag on the 4th of July. Christian, don't, it's, and by the way, waving the American flag does not mean that I don't appreciate the other countries. For a long time, this sanctuary had about, I think, 20, 26 flags in it of all the countries, you know. People keep hitting their heads on them. So, we, you know, when we remodeled, took the pews out, we changed things. But uh, I'm not against putting them back up. We are a mission church. We invest thousands and thousands of dollars in other countries. Because America is a place where we can do it without restraint. Somebody say, thank God. Some of the most people that come across is so intelligent. They just can't nuance this out that I can love America and love other countries too. I don't get it. I don't understand it. So loving God then is our highest priority. I hope that you love God. I'm going to close this service with an opportunity for you to commit your life to Jesus Christ, God the Son, given to us as a gift from our Heavenly Father. That's our highest priority. And, it, and, and so Christian citizens in the United States, we have responsibilities. I'm going to give them to you quickly. The next three minutes, I'm going to give you every one of them. We should re, what I want to emphasize, we should respect our leaders and pray for them. Now, I told you about how the Lord gave me a spanking in here one time. I was, I was in here doing prayer, and I was praying for one of our presidents who I didn't agree with a lot of his philosophy, and I was praying... I was praying about him, <laughs> and I was doing it, but I was really telling the Lord what things had to change in Washington, D.C., and the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, what are you doing? I said, uh, I said I'm, I'm praying for the president, and he said, again, for those of you who are new, he didn't say it where I could hear it, but I felt impressed. I flopped down over here. I sat down and said, man, here I am here praying. I'm getting in trouble with God. God said, you're not praying for him. You're praying about him. I said, say What? <laughs> And I started thinking about all my prayers that I ever had about him. And they certainly were not for him. They were about him. And so God said, God, forgive me. Bless him. Open his eyes, God. Bless him. Bless his wife. Bless his daughters. Bless him. Soften my heart. My prayers were more sincere. And we should have respect for our leaders. It starts with our, with our mayor, with the, with, the, uh, with the policeman who walks up to your car, with the teachers in your school, leaders, we should respect them. All authority comes from heaven, the Bible says. Come on, church. Can't, we can't talk Bible when it fits our, our, how we feel, and then when, it, when it, we bristle at it when it comes across another way. We've got to either believe what the Bible says or not. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority, Romans 13 says, except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. You can't say, oh, he's a liar. Everybody says, everybody says, Biden's a liar. Well, Trump's a liar. Look, they're all liars. I've lied. I'm not going to live my life as a liar. I don't have to lie for the role I play. And someone told me one time, because uh, I love political science, and they said, well, you've got to lie to be elected. Well, if that's true, shame on us. We've got to be lied to to be elected. Like the equity lie, that, that equity lie. Equality, I'm for. Put me down. I believe we should all, everybody should have an equal shot. But the equity lie that everybody's going to end up the same, that's a political lie. They can say it. They can promise it. They can, it is not true. Everybody's not going to end up the same. So the whole process has a lot of untruthfulness in it. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us see what are we supposed to do with what we know. Help me, help me discern the truth. But expect to be lied to. Now, I, 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 you know, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> I wish it was different. We just have to make sure we don't lie. We need to tell the truth. 
We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. We want to be really quiet. And I'm advocating for less this election season. I'm advocating for less. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging me for less because we don't want to be contentious if we don't need to be. We don't need to be afraid. We don't want to let fear motivate us not to speak. But we also want to make sure that when we speak and when we declare that we do it under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing the heart of God? So God can, we told us to be quick to listen and slow to speak. You know what they taught us in children's church? We've got two ears and one mouth, right? I mean, it's a simple way to remember to listen more and listen to learn, not to reply. Secondly, when we have leaders, we should obey the laws of the land as long as they don't conflict with God's word. As soon as it starts conflicting with God's word, then we need to do all we can to get the laws changed as quickly as possible. I won't read all those scriptures to you. They're there for you to read. Uh, Romans 13 and 1 Peter 2. But I will tell you this. We should obey. We should respect our leaders. <laughs> we should obey the laws. And here we go. Now, everybody reach back. Grab your wallet. We should pay our taxes. See, some of you are like, yay, Pastor Steve. Whoop. We should pay our taxes. That's what Jesus said. He said, give the Lord what's the Lord, but what did he say? But give to Caesar what's Caesar's. You don't like your taxes? Then uh, elect different officials. Or there's ways you can invest in, I don't know, I'm not really big on that. I, 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 they get 15% right off the top of me, man. I'm, I'm self-employed, so I just say goodbye. You know. But we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be tax frauds. Believers should not be tax frauds. And because we believe this country is the best country and because we believe that we thank God for our freedom, we should invest in it. Oh, yeah, with a good attitude. That's what Jesus said. See, we have our primary responsibility is to God, but our second responsibility, of course, would be God, family. But we do have a responsibility to the country that we live in if we want to keep it strong. Are you, are you grateful for a military that protects you? Say amen. Are you grateful for the interstates that we have? That you can Are you grateful for the roads in Michigan? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> well, we're an imperfect country. <laughs> so what's our lesson learned? What are we going to leave here today? What, what, what are we going to take with us to make sure? I know we've got places to go. We'll see you tonight at 730. But what are some things that we need to make sure that we glean from here? Christ followers ought to be a blessing to any country that they call home. Christians in France ought to be a blessing to France. Christians in Spain ought to be a blessing to Spain. Christians in Michigan ought to be a blessing to Michigan. Christians who live in Tamarack ought to be a blessing to the people of Tamarack. You hear what I'm saying? In other words, where you're planted, you're there to have a positive impact. Genuine Christians, number two, are the source of general welfare, revenue, prayer, a prayer covering, respecting the laws, and leadership wherever they reside. In other words, if a Christian moves in next to you, it ought to be a good thing. You hear what I'm saying? If your neighbor's a believer, it ought to be a good thing. They ought to be a blessing. And so if I'm going to, wherever I live, I ought to bless that area. Country, neighborhood, school, job. Number three, it's okay to love our country. My goodness. It's okay to love our country. But we must always keep God's first, Jesus is Lord, and the Bible as our ultimate authority. The Bible trumps the Constitution, if there's any conflict. The Bible trumps the Declaration of Independence, if there's any conflict. The Bible is our supreme ruling, the word of the Lord. And lastly, as we are, as we are blessed to bless others, the USA is blessed to be a blessing to the world. And that's why I'm grateful to be here. And that's why I want to make sure that I don't, I'm not hindered by the uh, the someone clamping down on me that you can't, you can't wave a flag or be grateful openly or love your country, that somehow by loving America that I love Jesus less. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I can't believe some of the things I read that I see from people that I respect about our country. I can't believe it. I think we've gotten off kilter here a little bit. Jesus first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus first. 
keep that first. Let's keep the let's keep the the first things the first things. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. But as we enter this season that could be stressful and unrest full of contention, this is our time to shine because of Jesus in our lives. It may not look like you may you may feel like you got beat up, but I want to get a well done from Jesus at the end. That's what I'm looking for. And that might mean that I'm my lips bleeding. Not because I got a backhand from somebody, but because I had to bite my lip a few times. Because in the flesh, I wanted to say something. I wanted to, I wanted to get a shot in. But I'm going to bite my lip for the kingdom's sake. I'm not talking about being afraid to speak truth to power. I'm talking about not responding in a way which displeases the Lord. You can do it with God's help if you're led by the Holy Spirit. Heads bowed and eyes closed and no one looking around. Perhaps this is a, you've never given your life to Jesus. You've never asked God to forgive you. You've never asked him to come into your life. But today you're saying, I'd like to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I'd like to make him king, my king. I want to be a citizen of heaven as Paul was. And if that's you today, I want to pray for you. I won't call you out, but if you're here today and you want to slip your hand up real quick, I want to pray for you. Anybody want to say, this is the day I'm committing my life to Christ. Is anyone here today? I see a hand. Praise God for his goodness. Amen. If you're here today and you've made that decision for Jesus, most of us have, but if you've made that decision for Jesus, would you slip your hand up real quick? I want to see how many Christians we have here today. An army of believers. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. An army of believers that can call upon the name of the Lord and ask God to bless our president, vice president, Congress, senators, local, local state officials. We can make a difference, God. Draw them to you. If they're unbelievers, put godly people in their lives to influence them, God, I pray. Watch over them, I pray, God. Bless their children, God. Protect them from any evil doings, I pray. Believers or not, God, I pray. Give us the idea, God, that, that we can make a difference through prayer and fasting and intercession. Tonight, God, as we intercess for arch healing at the school, God, may we, there be a, 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 just a lift up, a swell up of faith, God, in you and your healing touch, I pray, God. But today, Lord, we ask for that for America. America needs to be healed, God. So turn our leader's eyes toward you, I pray. Interrupt the schemes of the evil one, I pray. And God, we ask you to bless us in our righteousness, God, in the things we're doing right, God. And God, we want to be blessed to be a blessing, God. Use us, God, I pray. Find us worthy, God. Draw us to you. Lord, meanwhile, let our church, our homes, our individuals here today, may we not fall short of the mark, not miss the mark, God, but serve you. Holy Spirit, we need your help. Hover heavy on us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand?